Hello everybody, welcome back to the show. Today we're going to talk quickly about my Realism mod configuration and the settings that I use. And I also want to say that if you're using version 3.9.5 of SPT that came out yesterday, then your spawn system is likely broke because of Realism mod if you're using it. I had to go in and disable the bot changes in the desktop configuration tool, which I'll have on the screen now to show the changes that I've made. In addition to that, I've also disabled things like falling damage, I've disabled the tiered flea market, and also the trader changes that make it more difficult to get things. That just makes it easier for me to navigate the market and get what I need for videos and post clips and all that good stuff. Very useful for mod demonstrations and explanations, let me tell you. I have, of course, enabled all the medical changes, the stim changes, everything else, uh, the hazards are enabled. All that good stuff, all the really fun stuff that make the uh, in-raid gameplay much, much better. And of course, you've probably seen that in my uh, videos leading up to this point. But let's take a look just real quickly at the Bep and X menu entry for Realism Mod. This is the bottom of it right here. And this is the top right here, and of course, it has tons of advanced settings for many of its categories. And I'll tell you right now, I haven't changed any of the advanced settings except for the stance positions, which you may also be familiar with from uh, my other videos. And right now, I think I've only changed the high ready. Low ready is still like that. I haven't changed anything for the patrol stance or anything like that. I've just moved the rifle out of the way a little bit more so that I can see more clearly when I run around. And I've also disabled the tactical sprint for the high ready stance. Now, I'm going to disable advanced settings, go back up to the top, and I'll also say that this will be a pretty easy explanation of the settings that I use because most are still completely default. I haven't really gone into adjust any of them, as you can see here. Those are all still enabled. The recoil settings I have not changed, and that's mostly because I always want to demonstrate what the recoil is like without having enabled the uh, hybrid system again, which I had for the first recoil demonstration. The hybrid system is super cool and really useful, but it seems a little bit easier, at least for me, to, uh, to control recoil when that's on. It's like the character is automatically controlling it himself, and it just throws me off just a little bit, so I, I don't use that uh, currently. Obviously the horizontal reset is disabled. I haven't changed any of the stat display settings, those are all still there, I find them quite useful. Um, I just, uh, these are still by default also, these aren't on uh, just as it comes, and I haven't enabled those at any point. For weapon settings and health and med settings, all these sections here still by default. I like how they run, I like how they do. Note that it is possible to control these two parameters here in the hazard zone settings for your mask breath volume and also the device volume, so if either of those are too loud, you can just turn those down and they'll be much less of a problem. I have enabled the movement setting changes here for the ground material speed modifier and the slope speed modifier. I think that's kind of immersive and I like it so far. It does slow me down quite a bit on certain surfaces, but I mean it's kind of the point, isn't it? Deafening and audio has remained all the same. I haven't gone in to adjust any of these sliders that's been far too much work for me thus far. As you can see, I've changed just a little bit these weapon speed modifiers to make things like reloading and rechambering or checking faster, just a little bit. You can freely adjust them up or down, their values are just fine as they are, but I wanted them to be a little speedier. For the weapon stances, this is pretty much all default. Um, I do have block shooting while in stance so that I can hit the trigger to, you know, cancel a stance and go back to the regular firing position whenever. It's good to have remember stance on, that's pretty useful. For my own purposes, I've disabled the idle arm stamina drain because I'm often standing in one place talking for a long period of time to demonstrate a thing and obviously I lose arm stamina pretty quickly doing that. And here is that high ready sprint animation if you want to toggle that on or off. Uh, I haven't changed the offsets or the rifle position or anything yet, I have thought about it. Um, I've got some plans for that in the near future just to see if uh, I can do something fun with it, but uh, other than that, nothing so far. And of course, the weapon stance is keybinds right here. Um, I wonder what's different for me than is uh, for default. So mostly, I've set my stances to cycle using uh, holding control and scrolling up or scrolling down, and then I've also got the patrol stance on the enter key, and active aim on my middle mouse, and I've set that to toggle to be much easier to use. Now, those settings for me all make the game more uh, immersive and also just more fun to play, and I like the functionality of all of them. And if I change them any more drastically in the near future, I'll let you know, but these are the settings that have held for quite a while. And uh, most of my videos previous have been using those settings almost exactly, so if you've liked what you've seen up to this point, then I suggest you use them. Now, you will find that if you attempt to freely adjust these stance sliders, that you can move your weapon and arms in bizarre ways and turn your character into a clipping pretzel, so just be careful with that. The, uh, the steps on those sliders are rather large, and it's easy to just, like, throw the arms of the weapon very far away from your actual character model. Also, if you are wondering what I like to carry in my medical first aid kit right here, 
typically, I'll carry everything that I find on PMCs and scavs um, and just hoard it with me for the rest of however long it lasts. It's good to have AI2, obviously, for toxicity and radiation. Good to have AFAX for bleeds, things like morphine for pain, but also a Calog B hemostatic applicator to deal with heavy bleeds where uh, you can't actually apply tourniquets any longer because of the realism mod. Now, when it comes to gunplay with the realism mod, I love the fact that you can knock bots down and also disarm them by hitting their arms. I find that the time to kill is very much adjusted by the realism mod because of the changes to the medical system, and I like it quite a bit. Um, oftentimes, if I get a good shot on a bot, um, if I've ambushed them and they're not ready to respond to me, they simply can't react if I've actually hit them because they're suddenly dealing with such magnitude of injuries, and also the need to, like, retreat and heal if they have any medical items, that uh, they just can't fight back properly anymore. Obviously, that's a good thing for me. Wow, this guy's, like, all folded over. Huh. Ooh, nice. He had... a rather long G36. As you can see, I'm using a G36 right now, but he does not have the NATO magazine well. Hmm. So naturally, if you dislike things that the realism mod does to things like, uh, weights, or your comfort level, or the way that it makes the character move, or even this right here, there's a little bit of weapon sway you might notice, that's also part of the, uh, the realism mod now. Ergonomics and uh, comfort play into how the weapon is handled, and there's a little bit of lag, depending on the weight of you and the weapon, when turning back and forth, and I like that a lot. Now, don't forget with the health changes that you will still need to eat and drink, if not more frequently sometimes, and... The effects of food and drink won't take effect, <laughs> won't take hold right away. Watch this. It'll be a gradual increase after I've finished the bottle. See that? That's pretty doable. As long as I remember to drink in time, I'm always okay. Oh, I did hear somebody over there. He's like, talking to himself or maybe even somebody else. On the road, I guess. Oh, <laughs> he's just over there. Or there's one guy over there, anyway. Um, is he alive? Uh, not anymore. <laughs> if that guy was alive before he was napping or staring off into the distance or something. Using an inventory, not paying attention. Uh, one mod I'm definitely going to have to talk about soon is the Shadow Flicker Fix, which I've installed. And I gotta say, it sure has improved the look of woods tenfold. I was actually recently having quite a bit of trouble with those flickering shadows. Yeah, that guy should be over- oh, there he is. Oh my gosh. I'm out. That was close. Let's give him some suppressing fire. Keep his head down. Load in advance. Oh, did I get him? Was my fire effective? Nope. Wow. He did a very poor job of responding to me. Uh, he only had a very damaged Saga 9. Maybe he wasn't all that capable of fighting back in the first place. Oh, wow, very little. Just a dorm key. 303. Bandages and... Other painkillers and things are always good to find. Alright, and those are the settings that I'm currently using for Realism Mod. Now it's time to run away and start on another video, because there's so much to cover. A bunch of mods were recently updated, and of course, SPT 3.9.5 being out changes things as well, so expect another video very, very soon. Let me know in the comments what else you'd like to see, and if there's anything else about the Realism Mod you would like me to demonstrate or go over. And I'll see you very soon.